So we talk a lot about run, walk, run. And when we do, we talk about things like ratio, pace, and heart rate. But one thing we don't talk much about is walking. Welcome to the Aegis Runner, I'm Ralph. When I refer to walking in run, walk, run, I'm specifically referring to walk time. Is there a good walk time? Is there a better walk time? Now, if you've done any reading of Jeff Galloway or spent some time on his website, you may have read that Jeff kind of recommends not going over 30 seconds. And I assume that's based on his experience with thousands of runners. You just, you just don't get much benefit going over 30 seconds. So we'll, we'll accept that. I don't have any problem accepting that at the moment. Uh, but what about on the low end? I've not read anything that Jeff says specifically about What's the minimum time you should walk? Maybe there's something out there I just haven't come across. If you heard something, well, put it down in the comments. Uh, but if you look at his website and look at the different intervals he recommends, they're all walk times are generally between 15 and 30 seconds. So he's kind of de facto recommending at least 15 second walk time. But I got to thinking, when we go from walking to running, what happens? Will our muscles start to recover? Our body stops producing lactate, although it's still clearing the lactate out of our body, our respiration rate goes down and our heart rate goes down. And I got to thinking of all those things I just mentioned there, I can record heart rate. I can record that during a run. And what if I were to look at how my heart rate changes when I start walking? Is there any valuable information there that might give me a clue and be a little smarter about my walk times? So I decided to do an experiment, taking my Garmin chest heart rate strap and decided to go out and do some runs. And the nice thing about the Garmin, it records my heart rate real time, saves all the data in the Garmin Connect app. I can later go in and look at the peaks and the valleys and the data and try and determine was my heart rate initially, or was it at 15 seconds, or was it at 30 seconds? And I actually ended up doing two runs because the first run I did, it was very hot and muggy outside. The dew point was upper 70s, like 77, 78. So I'm about a half hour into my experiment, my run. I'm finding it extremely difficult to keep my heart rate in the mid 130s, he's wanting to creep up in the low 140s. That's due to the humidity. You need to be aware of that if it's humid out, your body doesn't uh, evaporate the sweat as much. You don't get that cooling. Therefore, your heart rate's going to be higher. So I need to be careful, and you do too, if you're running in high uh, humidity environments. And so I did a second run just this morning where it's much cooler. The dew points are at least 20 degrees less. They're in the upper 50s, just under 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And I kind of had the opposite problem. I had to work really hard to get my heart rate up to 155. I was almost sprinting at times to get that higher heart rate. Uh, but between the two runs, I got some data and I, and I can form some conclusions from that data. So I went into my Garmin Connect app and tried to look, again, pull these data points of heart rates at 15 seconds to 30 seconds. It's not the best uh, app to look at this data and I can't figure out how to export it and maybe look at it a little better but I was able to get some data so the table I'm showing you now is kind of the results of my analysis of my Garmin Connect heart rate data and it's in percent drop you'll see two broad rows a hot and muggy roll that was the high dew point day and the cool one that was this morning was much cooler uh, dew point and and then two general walking times 15 seconds 30 seconds and again data for each heart rate 135 and 155 and and let's just take the first row the first upper left quadrant that's the hot and muggy row at 15 seconds. And you can see that roughly 135 beats per minute when I started walking, I was roughly 135 beats per minute with my heart rate. After 15 seconds, my heart rate declined about 10%. Now that's 10% compared to my resting heart rate. In other words, the difference between 135 and a resting heart rate of 65 that I use is 70 beats per minute. So that says after 15 seconds at 135, my heart rate dropped about seven beats per minute. But 155 beats per minute starting uh, heart rate, I only dropped about 5%, about half as much. What that's saying is at the lower heart rate, I get twice the amount of recovery at, at 135 initial starting heart rate than I do at 155. So my heart rate dropped more when I had a lower initial heart rate. And that's maybe not, not a surprise. If you're running really hard and your heart's beating really fast, you only walk for 15 seconds, it may not decrease enough, may not be enough recovery with just 15 seconds if you're running really hard. And same thing if you look at the bottom, bottom section, the cool weather. Now you will notice that I got more recovery in the cool weather regardless of heart rate than I did in the hot and muggy weather. But again, at the lower initial heart rate, I get a little more recovery than at the higher initial heart rate. That data kind of suggests that at 15 seconds, you're going to see a big difference in your recovery depending on how hard you're running. So if you're running really hard, you might want to um, walk a little longer. 
and also suggests that at really hot and muggy weather, you don't get as much recovery as you do at cooler weather. So again, you may want to walk a little longer if it's kind of warm and muggy out. Now, 30 seconds, at 30 seconds, what was interesting is whether it's hot and muggy or cool, there's really no difference between the two heart rates, 135, 155. I got almost the same amount of recovery. I did get a little more recovery at the cooler weather than the hotter weather, but there's not a big significant difference in recovery at 30 seconds. So that lends a lot of credibility to Jeff's comment about there's not a lot of value walking over 30 seconds. So I would say don't go over 30 seconds. I would agree with Jeff on that. But again, on the low end at 15 seconds, I think it really depends on what's the weather like, how hard are you running. 15 seconds could be too low to get some sufficient recovery to help you, you know, if you're doing a long run, for example. So the hotter it is, the harder you're running, you may want to walk a little more than 15 seconds seconds, maybe you want to do 20 or 25 or even 30. Um, so keep that in mind when you're going out and planning your, your ratios and your intervals to do your run walk run. Now keep in mind this data is for me and I, although I don't know that the conclusions would be much different for anybody else, uh, but you might get different results you did the same experiment yourself. I think again the conclusions are the same. The hotter it is, the longer you may want to walk. And the harder you run, the maybe the longer you want to rock. It's just that don't take these percentages as being absolute, meaning you would see the same kind of percentage drop because you probably wouldn't, because you're different than me. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope I gave a little uh maybe some data and some credibility to maybe what you knew intuitively. Again, the hotter it is, the harder you run, walk a little longer. That's pretty simple, I think. Just keep that in mind. And if you like this video, please scroll down and hit the like icon. Gosh, those likes really help me. And if you're new here, I'd love to have you stick around. Please hit the uh, subscribe button also. Thank you so much and happy running.